Hi guys, welcome back. Pin here, or if it's your first time, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy it. All right, today instead of taking out me to take photos, like I went out recently to Barangaroo, if you were following me on Instagram and Facebook, you would have seen I finally made it out to Observatory Hill. But today, because I was actually working on a blog on this as well, I thought it'd be also a good opportunity to do a video on it, which is camera accessories. And by that, I mean, well, I'm going to go over two separate parts. I'm going to go over camera accessories that you definitely should have with you, regardless of your type of photography, whether it's landscape, portrait, product, sport, whatever it may be. These are things you should have in your bag at any given point, but then also nice to have accessories, which may or may not be required depending on the type of photography you do. All right, mine is a bit specific toward specific towards landscape photography since that's 99% of what I shoot. Sometimes I do a bit of street, but mostly landscape. So I will go over the nice to have accessories later. All right, you can see there's a few items here already. Now, these aren't in any particular order. That's not done by price, by importance, by value. It's because I think all of them have their own value and it's up to you to de determine which one provides you with more value. The first one I'll start off with is this nice, simple rocket blower. All right, this, it literally does what it looks like it does. It's when you get a bit of dust on your lens, which thankfully this one is quite clean, but you get it, or even on your sensor as well, I should say, you can just spray it on and hopefully it gets rid of all of, or most of the dust. So that way, at least when you're out there taking photos, your lens stays dust free, which means your images stay dust free. Because otherwise, I mean, you can remove dust spots on Lightroom and Photoshop, but if you can avoid having to spend that 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending how many there are, it's a lot better that way. All right, that old phrase, always get it right in camera, but don't, instead of having to fix it in post sort of thing. All right, and sim oh, I'll put this over here so I know I've covered it. Similar to that air blower is microfiber cloths. I've got two here. This one, this big one that you might remember from the What's in My Bag episode, all right, has, it's great at polishing the lens, but it's not so great at getting the dust off the lens, but also because of its size, it's good when, like when I was at, at in Kirribilli a couple months back taking photos, then I was getting splashed by the waves. This helps keep the camera dry. So it's great at polishing and like getting rid of streaks and whatnot, but in terms of capping the dust, it's not the best. I still keep it as a just in case, but this microfiber cloth that I got recently does a much better job at getting stuff off the lens because sometimes the air blower doesn't work, that microfiber cloth doesn't work, but this one, when I used it when I was out yesterday, it did a great job. In drying the lens, getting the dust off the lens, then this one was used to polish the lens off so there's no streaks on it, but this one came in handy and it was a lifesaver had it otherwise, I would have driven myself out there, gotten rained on, and then had to come home because I couldn't clean the lens. Luckily that didn't happen. So it's, I'm not going to talk about the case yet. That's for the nice to have accessories, right? It's what's in the case that's more important. And in this case, I always have, it's a new case I got recently and I got this one on purpose because as you can see, I can store spare batteries and spare SD cards. One thing that's happened to me, oh, how many years ago was it? A couple years ago, I think two or three years ago now, uh, when I was out taking pictures in Hong Kong, battery died and I was halfway through the day. It wasn't on the Canon, it was on my previous Nikon, I think it was a D5600, and I got through about three, 400 shots and the battery was dead. And because I hadn't organized myself properly, I didn't have my spare battery with me. So having a spare battery is essential, right? Because the last thing you want to happen is exactly like what happened to me in Hong Kong is that I was out, I was taking photos, the battery died, and that particular camera, you can't charge it with a power bank or anything or use it even if it's connected to a power bank. So then the rest of my day was a write-off. I couldn't take any photos. I missed out on quite a lot. I was kicking myself for the rest of the day and I've made sure I learned my lesson since and I hope you guys don't have to make my mistake, which is why I'm saying get a spare battery. You don't have to get a branded one. Like yes, granted, this is a Canon one because hmm, I just got it, but you can get third-party ones Granted, they are normally not as powerful. So like this one is, I have gotten 600 shots out of this before it died, 
but the third party one will probably do about 400 when I tested it out before it died. So that's something to bear in mind, but always have a spare battery with you. Right? If you've used one battery and it's, and it's drained out, at least you've got a spare to help you keep going, whether it's to take photos, take videos, time lapses, whatever the case may be. But then also make sure you charge both of them or three or four or five, however many you've got depending on your camera when you get back home because if it's happened to you once, you can almost guarantee that you'll try to do whatever you can to make sure it doesn't happen again. Or like I've got, I'm actually filming on the GoPro right now because that's why the Canon's there to show you something later. I've always got at least three GoPro batteries with me, one in the GoPro and two spares. So far I haven't needed more than three, thankfully, but if I do need to get some more, then that's definitely not an issue. Also that you'll see in this case is spare SD cards. And I've got spare SD cards for both iCanon and the GoPro because it's similar principle to a spare battery, except at least with an SD card, you can go back and delete all photos you might not need anymore. But in saying that you might miss out on the photo you want to take because you're spending the time going through the menu, deleting pictures you don't want, instead of just clicking away to your heart's content. So I put, I've got a 64 gig in there. I've got a 128 and a 32 gig spare. Thankfully, I've never needed them yet, but as a just in case, like if you're out and about or you're in a location where you want to take lots of photos and you just don't want to have to worry about running out of space, having a spare card always helps. Plus, if for whatever reason your memory card dies on you, it's happened to me, but it was in my phone of all things, not in my camera, then at least you've got a spare and you can still keep taking photos. Where if you're, you've only got one card and suddenly it becomes corrupted, you've lost all the pictures, you can't take any more pictures, you you have to either go buy one and hope that and format it or straight um, hope buy one easily hopefully i should say and then you can start again but there's that time lost in between realizing your car's corrupted finding a shop that has it and then getting ready to go again and getting back to where you were before so at least having a spare sd card or two or three it, I mean, it it's all depends what type of photography you do always helps i've never had to run out i have one of my colleagues gave me a tip that like every couple of times you've gone out to take photos, just format your SD card that way. You know it's wiped, you know it's clean, you know you've got all the space that that card can handle without thinking, have I, rewired, have I got enough space left to go out today? All right, so I'm gonna keep this one on the side because it's gonna come in handy later. And last but not least, camera strap. And I would say this is important because you got like, if you guys have seen that what's in my bag, you know that I've got a big bag. Getting the camera in and out of there can sometimes be a chore, it's a hassle. But like when I was walking around yesterday, this strap was clipped to the bottom of the camera, like that. I like this one because it's peak design. I've got a shoulder strap that I'll show you guys in a second as well. And you can walk around and hold the camera that way. So at least this way, you don't have to think, oh, I want to get the photo away. Let me put the bag down. Let me get the camera out. Let me do this. Let me do that. It's you walk around with the camera like this in your hand and you're good to go. And the good thing is it also makes your bag significantly lighter when you're actually carrying the camera in your hand versus on your shoulder. I know there's debates about which one's healthier and better for your back and whatnot, but I found it easier to just walk around carrying this than I did having it in the bag. And also that way when I just wanted to compose quickly, I didn't have to put the bag down and get the camera out because it's already out and it's easier to carry than just holding onto it like this because eventually your grip might fail. I'm not going to say it will because I don't know how strong each of you are, but that's something to bear in mind. And if you don't want a wrist strap, you can always go. Sorry. If you don't want a wrist strap, you can always go with a shoulder strap, right? Also from Peak Design, I got this one first actually because I found it easy to walk around with this and get the bag, get the sorry, get the camera in and out of the bag all the time. Tedious thing, and after a while, you either just carry the camera and you resent the fact you're carrying it. You can't be asked getting the camera out of the bag and then you just don't take any photos. So at least with this one, because it's adjustable and padded, that's one of the reasons I, I got it because of that, that factor. Plus it's easy to connect compared to the standard strap that comes with cameras where you have to loop it through and then adjusting it's a nightmare, putting it on and taking it off is a nightmare. That's one thing, that's why I chose the Peak Design one because these anchors are used between all the, all the products I've got from them anyway. I do apologize for that scraping on the table. Get on there! And you can carry it that way. 
I'm not going to stand up so that way to show you guys what I mean, but you can carry it around your neck like this. Ow! No, not the funny bone, it's okay. Or hang it over your shoulder like that. And then if you are using a backpack, I have found put it over, put the camera on first and then put the bag on because otherwise your camera strap's going over your bag and then it's just gonna, you have to hope that your camera strap's long enough to wrap around it, which most of them aren't. So I'm just going to put the camera back the strap back as well and try not to make too much noise let's put these out of the way so those are the essentials that i'll say that regardless of whatever photography you do have them with you at any given point your air blower your microfiber cloth i mean heck you could use this on your phone screen as well if that got wet i used it on the gopro screen like that's filming right now when that got wet and it's a lifesaver. And the good thing is they're cheap. So once one, if one gets wrecked or you lose it, it's not too expensive to get another one. Now that we've done the essentials that you should always have with you, let's also do nice to haves. Not all of you may need this. This is, these are accessories I've bought and still use or sometimes use, or if I don't bring it with me, I wish I did bring it with me. And and some, some of them it's also, or one of them in particular, I should say, is also, it makes life easier sort of accessory like it is it's an efficient one and that's going sorry efficiency learn to speak pin it's an efficiency one and that's this case because it makes it nice and easy so i trying to do it quietly to have the battery and the case and the, the battery and the cards all in the same case right because granted sd cards do come The case is not meant to be held like that. These cards, they do come in their own little plastic sleeves when you first get them, or little little cases. But if you chuck that in a big bag like my camera bag or even in your regular backpack, what would happen if you can't find it? Because it's got this tiny little card in a big bag and it's covered in stuff. It could be right down at the very bottom. And then you're gonna be wasting time finding it. Whereas having a case like this where it's all set aside nice and easy, makes life a lot easier for you. So I keep, I've, I got this recently and it sits in one section of my bag and I know exactly where it goes. So I always know where to look for a spare battery. This one is debatable, granted. It's a camera bag insert. Camera bag insert like this, it's not limited to just the Manfrotto bag. I can use it on any shoulder bag, backpack, whatever bag I'm using at the time. If I don't want to carry, my big ass camera bag with me which in my last trip to bangkok from thailand i didn't have it yet so i just brought that and the good thing is this is big enough to hold the to hold my cannon it was small enough that it fits comfortably in my backpack and it also makes sure that everything stays safe all right so you don't have to worry about it banging around in there it's not it's not waterproof or water resistant but I mean, as long as you don't have a water bottle of water or a drink in your bag, you know, spill on you, it's not gonna be an issue. But also, if you're not sure if you wanna get a camera bag yet, at least you have something to separate your camera body and lens from everything else in your bag and prevent scratches and dents and whatnot, depending on what's in your bag naturally. Plus, it's a lot cheaper to get this compared to a camera bag. Or like this, is, you could probably get something like this for 30, 40, 50 bucks at most, whereas that bag was six times the price. I'll let you guys do the math. All right, so this is a good to have. It's a nice to have, it's not an essential. Some people may, you may want to skip past this entirely and go straight to the camera bag itself because that way you've, it's a lot easier to organize all your equipment. I'll be the first one to say that. So that's a definite nice to have. Another nice to have, again, depends on your type of photography, is a tripod. This is actually my third, yeah, my third tripod. All right, and this one's the three-legged thing, Travis. So I just had to turn it around so I could actually see which one it was. And because I do landscape and I do long exposure, like last night I was doing 60 seconds, two minute exposures, it is simply impossible to do that handheld. All right, an alternative is you can always, you know, find something sturdy and stable to put your camera on, but then you are limited to whatever's around you, so you may not get the angle you want. Whereas with this, I got this one because it gives me the height I need and it's very light as well. The other tripod I'm using that the GoPro is sitting on is the Manfrotto B3. A tripod comes in handy because that way if you want to do a selfie, you want to do long exposure, you want... Did I really do selfie first? 
if you want to do long exposures or time lapses, whatever the case may be, at least, or even just, you want to just put the camera there, sit down and have a break, and you just look up quickly and take a picture whenever, but you know your composition is always set, that's where a tripod comes in handy as well. You don't have to be a landscape photographer either to do, to use a tripod. You could be a portrait photographer and you've got a setup where, you know, people always sit there and you keep, and you don't have to worry about always getting the same angle again because your camera is sitting on your tripod and unless you move it, it doesn't move or it shouldn't move if it's a quality tripod at any rate. Tripods are nice to have. I would recommend getting one for damn near anyone except someone who's in street unless they want to do long exposure. And street because you literally walk around and taking pictures as soon as you can that you don't have time to think about putting your camera on a tripod, which is the only reason that I would say that a street photographer probably wouldn't use it as much as a landscape or portrait photographer. Same goes for sports. They probably use monopods and what same monopods because of the size of the lenses they're using to try and hold them up for like a 90 minute game would be exhausting. And the last one is, well, actually, let's go over this one first, is a polarizing filter. All right, this is, I'm not going to speak over there. This is Nissi's V6 polar, circular polarizer that I've got. It always sits on the camera because I'm almost always using it and it's just easy to keep it on there and I've just seen how filthy it is. I better get that cleaned. But effectively, this, a polarizer that comes in handy when you want to reduce glare or reflections when you from sunlight or any light I should say for that matter like if I used it right now if my monitor was on I should say you wouldn't see the monitor anymore it would just go black and that's where it comes in handy plus what a polarizer can do is almost impossible to fix in post as well so that's one thing to bear in mind and when I use it it's to cut through the water to cut the reflection off the water, I should say, like when I was at Watson's Bay. I'll put a picture up right now, so you know what I mean, but I wouldn't have been able to see through the water without the polarizer being able to cut through that for me. So a polarizer filter, you don't have to get one, a full set like this. You can get one dedicated to whatever lens it is you're using. If you've got multiple lenses, I would say get the one for the largest lens you've got. When I say largest, I mean filter thread size. Like this one's an 82 millimeter one, but my lens is I think it's 77 and then get step down rings all right like this is actually this polarizer this is the polarizer this is just a step down ring so it fits on my lens and that way it always works some call it step down some call it step up some call it adapter at the end of the day it all does exactly the same thing which is lets you adapt a large filter onto a smaller filter size that is all right and then following on from that is a neutral density filter now i've only got I'll do this first. This is my Nissi filter holder and I've got, a, this is a three stop. I've also got a six stop and a night filter. And what this does is that where they would come in handy, I should say is, let's say you're out and about, you wanna take a photo with a really shallow depth of field like F2.8 or something, but because it's so bright, you've got to do a shutter speed of like say one, 25th hundred as an example. So I'm just chucking random numbers out. With this, you can slow down that shutter speed a, little, a bit if that's what it is, what, if that's what you're trying to do. All right, granted, because this is a square one and it's three stops only or six stops only, I have, I'm limited to those ones, but you can get the variable ND filters, which are exactly the same as this, sorry, this polarizer where it's effectively two polarizers mounted together and they'll have a range of stops of light that it'll adjust and this I used to have one that was like 1.5 to 5 stops and the other one was 5 stops to 10 stops and depending on what it is you're doing depends which one you should get but the advantage is that you don't have to worry so much about your picture being overexposed to get the style that you're after or the image that you're after I should say those are would be yeah I'd say that's pretty much all the nice to haves Right. Again, I mean, you don't have to get all of these accessories at the same time. If you were, if you did have to pick a few, I'd say, if you want, you can skip this and just get this. All right, skip the air blower. If you had to choose between the two, get the microfiber because not only can it help get rid of the dust, it can also dry your lens out if it gets wet. And also, if you had to choose between a spare battery and a spare SD card, get the battery. 
because at least with the SD card when you're out and about and after you've backed up the photos you've taken for that day, you can format it and start again. Get the battery, not the SD card, because yeah, you can format the SD card, but if the battery dies and you're out and about, there's nothing you can do. It's easier to get an SD card than it is to get a battery. Like here in Sydney, I could go to Kmart, Post Office, JB Hi-Fi, Office Works, you name it, to get a battery for my Canon, but it's harder to get, uh, I mean, sorry, it's easy for me to get an SD card for the Canon, but it's harder for me to get a battery for the Canon. So on that basis, I'd say get the battery over this pair of SD card. And as for the filters and the tripod, I mean, it, those literally come down to what style of photography you do. Some would say they're all necessary. That's always up for debate. Oh, and everything that I've got here, I'll put description in the links below as well. If you did want to see which ones they are, that way you can look into it and getting them if you want. That's pretty much it for now. I'm going to stop rambling because I know I've rambled on for quite a bit. I hope you guys have found all of this information useful. At least fingers crossed you did. And if you do have questions about any of these items that I put up here, drop me a comment down below or contact me through either of my social media channels. I'd be happy to have a chat with you about it. If you have liked this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you've got that little bell so that way you get a notification whenever a new video comes out. I'll leave it there for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you have a better idea of what accessories may be required. Yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night. I have to say that because it's nighttime, right?